Christ College Dean and Assistant Vice President for Mission and Spiritual Life, Susan Van Zanten, became the Dean of Christ College in July 2018, the first female dean in the college's 50 plus year history. She previously served at Seattle Pacific University, where she founded the Center for Scholarship and Faculty Development, directed the University Scholars Honors Program, and was a professor of English. Dean Van Zanten is a frequent speaker on Christian higher education across the country and has published extensively in areas such as vocation, faculty development, American literature, and African literature. She is the author or editor of seven books. For this portion of the call, you're welcome to unmute and ask your question out loud. Um, we'll you know, try to moderate ourselves. So if a couple people ask at the same time, um, we'll, we'll pick one person to go first. Um, you can also, if you prefer not to do that, submit your question in the chat. Or again, you can email it to us at alumni at velpo.edu. And I will keep an eye on that inbox and see if any questions come in that way. So without further ado, Dean Van Zanten. Well, let me just first of all say hello to everyone and thank you for joining us um, in this sort of uh, unusual and unique homecoming event. Uh, the whole year 2020 has proven to be unusual and unique, and yet it's really wonderful to see people's faces, hear their voices, and actually get to share some of your knowledge about CC. I'm a relatively uh, new, I'm a relative newcomer to CC. I'm in my third year now. Uh, I think the building is one of the greatest parts of the of our community, especially the commons. Um, the commons, while we don't have a refectory right now, uh, well, we do have the refectory, but um, we don't have the kitchen, but the commons has become kind of like that for us. Until COVID hit, every Friday we had an event called um, Fridays by the fireplace and we served food and coffee and tea for our students all Friday morning while the fire uh, was on and people just gathered there and chatted. Faculty dropped in and chatted and it really became that kind of communal center and uh, it represents for me every time I see the commons it represents you know the best part of CC the conversations the dialogue the discussions um, and I feel very privileged to work in a wonderful building like that. And thanks to Professor Bugellen for filling us in and all that interesting historic detail. So I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, you have about how things are going at CC or um, plans or whatever you want to ask. I what? have one. Oh, go ahead, Dot. <laughs> um, how are you finding the incoming new students this year? Are they particularly anxious? Or are they fitting in well? What's it like for them? Right. And for well, I might ask Professor Bugellen to, to uh, answer, uh, pitch in on this question because she is teaching this year, uh, this semester, a first year program course, yeah. which she hasn't done for how many years now? 10 years or so? I um, regularly teach freshmen in the spring semester, but I yeah. haven't in the fall, yeah, at least 10 years. Yeah. So, uh, I think, honestly, Dot, that it's easier in some ways on the freshmen, or the first years, sorry, I'm going to keep saying freshmen, um, the first years because college is exciting and they don't really have a great, have a sense of what they're missing. So they're excited to be here. They're, it's hard to get the same rapport in a classroom when people are spread far and wide and everyone's wearing masks. but. We're doing what we can. I had my students outside today so they could see each other and um, work in small groups. But their their uh, attitude is everything's just going to get better. So they're they're kind of starting where it's hard, and they're extremely careful with their COVID restrictions. I mean, generally Valpo students are being very careful. Um, they're excited to read the books that they're reading. They're working hard. They, they seem like excellent students. I don't see any sign that they're, they're uh, not going to make it through Christ College and, and just grow into tremendous people and do really well. Um, <clears throat> the only thing about masks is it's hard to hear each other. Uh, so mm -hmm. we do have to work on that a little bit. 
it's just not as chummy, but they're doing okay. I, I'm worried more about other classes where they're just frustrated because they don't have the closeness that they're used to. Thank you. I think also the, the, the first year students are just so happy to come to college after the sort of, you know, the, the sudden end to their senior year, mm -hmm. spending six months at home with their parents. <laughs> they're, they're glad to be out in a new world. And even as Professor Bugallon said, even though it's not exactly the way it has always been, they don't know any differently. Mm -hmm. It's somewhat harder for our upper class students who, who, yeah, there's lots of experiences we have not been able to have. For example, um, every year we have a traditional opening picnic um, and we do various sports and there's a, a famous tug of war that takes place between the various classes and the faculty. We, we had to cancel all of that this year because of COVID restrictions. So some of those social activities we haven't been able to do. Instead, we have put um, first year seminars into kind of into uh, to groups of two and we have upperclassmen assigned to them to help them socialize in those smaller groups. We can't have activities with over 100 people right now. Um, so uh, we're trying to get smaller groups together to socialize. And last night we had, and I haven't heard how this went yet, but we had our first um, uh, online Zoom mixer uh, where people were paired up uh, and had to talk with each other for five minutes and then they suddenly got switched on Zoom to another pair and then they had to talk for for uh, five minutes. And it was a way for people to, especially the first years, to get to meet some of the other upperclassmen. Wow, that sounds really cool. I like that idea. Um, there's a question that, yeah, as Carl says, CC speed dating, nice. Well, That's when, when, <laughs> when my staff and I first talked about it, somebody said it was gonna be speed dating. And I said, no, we need a different name for this. So yeah. it was called <laughs> Mixer. It was the Christ College Mixer, not speed dating. Yeah. Um, so Don asks, what has the most, what has most surprised you about life in CC, things that no job search interview process could fully <laughs> anticipate? Oh my. Well, I am, uh, my fr at the, at the end of my, my first year as, as Dean, I made a list of 10 things I never thought I would have to do as a Dean. You know, it was unexpected. Uh, probably number one of them up there was I drove a golf cart on the day of giving all over campus. Uh, the deans and the president and the provost, we each took a turn for an hour driving a golf cart, picking students up and then delivering them to their dorms or to the other places that they lived. And I've never golfed or driven a golf cart in my life. And that was a fairly interesting experience. Um, I also really enjoyed, uh, I, one of my duties is to judge the CC uh, poetry contest every year. And the winner of that contest um, uh, gets to turn the fire on for the first time in the fall. And um, it'll be, I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to do that this year. I've, I've actually been thinking, of, uh, and I think I have some kind of remote ways we can do it. Um, but we will, uh, again, have our annual poetry contest and the winner will turn on um, the fire. And I get to, I get to um, uh, judge that. But of course, probably one of the most amazing things is, is watching the freshman production come together and to see the students working together and then uh, over the course of, of time, what they are able to produce. Uh, the scripts are so smart, the songs are wonderful, um, the commentary um, that comes from usually what are quite humorous productions, but have a lot of deep thought in them. And again, this year, it's going to be so interesting to see what happens with the production. Um, it's going to be done in some kind of virtual fashion, and we have stretched it out over the entire year rather than just in the first semester. Um, it's probably going to be about two thirds of the way through spring semester the, the production will take place in some kind of virtual form. We don't know yet what. Um, could you talk a little bit about uh, more about some of those CC traditions? Uh, you mentioned the production is being, you know, held in the spring this year. I, maybe some people didn't get to see compliments of the dean, the most recent issue. Could you talk about the debate and the and the plan there? Oh, we actually we actually 
canceled the debates for this year. Uh, we had to, at uh, the last minute last year, cancel the debates because uh, the university closed before we were able to have the debates. I actually was working as the coach for the debate team last spring. And so I'd been working with all the teams. We'd actually, we'd gotten to the point of um, holding mock debates. They had all of their cases uh, figured out. And then when the university closed down, um, we had to cancel it. They were never able to present their debates. We, the faculty uh, and I and Assistant Dean Stewart had a long discussion this summer about what to do about um, the production and the debates. And we decided the production was a key event that needed to continue but we could not see cramming it into one semester because our semester was compressed again because of COVID. We have no breaks. We started early, we're finishing by Thanksgiving. And we didn't want to stress our first year students out even more by trying to get a production put together in that time. So we decided very reluctantly to cancel the debates this spring um, and extend the production over the whole year. Those students um, who want to participate in the debates next year, God willing, um, we, as sophomores will be invited to join um, the first year students in the debate program. And I anticipate that there will be some students. I don't think all of the students will do that, but there's some students that really were looking forward to the Oxford debates. And I anticipate that they will participate in their sophomore year. Well, that's excellent. I'm glad they'll get the, the chance to do that. I know both yeah. of those events are really dear to a lot of us. Um, Terry asks uh, about your additional title that you have in addition oh. to being the Dean of Christ College. So, you know, that's not something that perhaps you anticipated uh, when, when you came to Valpo. Talk a little bit about your, your, the other part of your work on campus as well. Well, okay. Um, I am Assistant Vice President for Mission and Spiritual Life, which means that I have responsibility, and that is in addition to my Christ College deanship, I have responsibility for all of the, of the chapel programs, the campus ministry programs, and the service programs that operate out of the Helgi Center. And I'm also responsible for sort of, I guess I would put it, upholding the mission of the institution, reminding people at strategic points in conversations and committees about the fact that we um, are an institution that's um, based in the Lutheran tradition and has this heritage, uh, that we are student focused, um, that we really encourage students to engage with society and become service uh, to in service and in, in leadership. Um, and that these are some of our priorities. This was seen as a very good kind of conjunction with Christ College because Christ College is seen as sort of one of the mission bearers of the institution. And so it was thought there was a lot of good synergy there. Many of our students, Christ College students, are very involved in the chapel program, in programs that are run by um, the Institute for Leadership and Service, which is based in the Helgi Center. So there's a lot of natural overlap there. I will say the one thing that was unexpected, well, getting this position was very unexpected, but the, you know, the, 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 the really unexpected thing was how complicated it is, um, the structure over there. I'm not used to working with those kinds of structures compared to, I'm used to working in academic structures, and this is a very different kind of structure. So I'm learning a lot, learning a lot about budgets. <laughs> Uh, well, well, thank you for, for sharing that. I know some people may have been wondering about that as well. Um, so Matthew asks, as this is the start of your third year, are there any changes on the horizon? What are some ways you're thinking to improve the CC experience? Perfect as it is, he says in parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now, I, to be honest, I am just longing to get back to the CC experience we had last year, you know, and trying to, this year is a year of trying to keep everyone um, on an even keel and to give our students the best possible experience we can with all the constraints that we have. And we have so many constraints, but nonetheless, it's better than nothing. And I think our students are responding well and our faculty are responding well. Once this is all over, I think I will dare to dream a little bit more. We'd been working on some programs for um, expanding the diversity in our enrollment 
which I would like to continue. Uh, the last, my first two years, we did increase the diversity of our incoming class. This fall, we did not. Um, it went down a little bit. Um, we've been trying to develop more programs for commuter students and first generation students, particularly, and I'd like to continue doing that as well. Uh, traditionally, Christ College students have tended to live on campus, but increasingly we're finding more and more students at Valpo as a whole are commuter students, and we want to try to incorporate them into Christ College as well. Um, I would say I would love to uh, beef up, uh, get, get, get a little bit more um, faculty support in Christ College. We've, we've lost faculty with, with budget cuts, um, and it's been we still have the same amount of students. Uh, our, we hit our enrollment targets this year, but we're actually down by three faculty lines. If you count, um, we don't have Lily as many um, Lily postdoctoral uh, positions anymore. And they uh, have traditionally taught in the first year program. So that was a scramble um, uh, this year to try to get enough people to cover our classes. So uh, in continuing to, I guess the other thing I'd add there is continuing to expand and encourage our students to study abroad. That's been a big um, emphasis in the last couple of years. And again, up until COVID, we've been very successful in getting lots of students, about a, a half of SEC students study abroad, which is a pretty high percentage. But this year, it looks right in the fall, we have no one studying abroad. And in the spring, we have currently only two students scheduled to study abroad. And that will depend on if the countries let them in. That's certainly a big change for CC. So we'll, we'll have to see, I think, how that, yeah. you know, that affects the university as a whole. Sure. As a whole, too, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, talk a little bit, since you are probably new to a lot of alumni and friends who are on this call, uh, uh, new to their Velpo world, talk a little bit about yourself, your background and your research. Um, mm -hmm. What's kind of a, a crash course in intro introducing Dr. Susan Van Zandt to the <laughs> alumni population? Oh my, well, um, I've been in Christian higher education my entire professional career. I've taught at five different institutions since getting my PhD. And um, I am originally from the West Coast, and most recently, before coming to Valparaiso, had been uh, working as a teacher and administrator at Seattle Pacific University, as Stephanie mentioned. My family is all back there in Seattle. Um, my, my mother, my sisters, my nieces and nephews, with the exception of my son, I have one son, Joseph, uh, who lives in London, England. Um, and uh, one of the hardest things for me this summer has been not being able to go either to the West Coast to see my family or to London. I usually go every summer to spend some time with him. Um, he's in grad school in London, um, keeping safe, doing well, but being frustrated and like everyone else, I guess. Um, I started off my academic career working in American literature, and I'm still a huge fan of Emily Dickinson, um, and I've written a book about Emily Dickinson and some articles about her. I'm particularly interested in how uh, she looks at questions of faith and doubt in her poetry. Um, then I took up the um, an area called of uh, of study in African literature after my, I, I started teaching. When I went to grad school, you couldn't work in African literature. That wasn't, it wasn't an academic area. It is a much, um, it's a booming academic area now. And I've actually done quite a bit of work in South African literature and Nigerian literature and taught, taught um, courses in that. I most recently wrote last year's alumni book circle I wrote the syllabus for on African literature. I see Terry's here. He, he and his group did it. I don't know if there's anyone else here who, who did that. that um, but that give, if you're interested in that, that will give you a sense of the kinds of, of work that I did. Um, and then, of course, I've also done a lot of work in Christian higher education, the role of vocation, helping faculty to learn what it means to work at a teacher teaching-centered institution. Uh, and a teaching-centered institution that's interested in students' growth, not just intellectually and professionally, but also personally, spiritually, um, and, and ethically. Um, so I've written a couple books about that, and I do a lot of work with uh, faculty across the country in faculty development programs, 
Last year, I went and did the faculty retreat at Concordia uh, University in Texas. I, I do a lot of that kind of thing. Um, so it's a little bit about me. I have a cat named Leo. I'm surprised he hasn't shown up because he, <laughs> he zooming and me being home, he thinks is great. It's amazing how pets just know the exact moment and right. would prefer they not involved yeah. <laughs> in your work. Um, <laughs> So if you were a Christ College student uh, right now, what seminar would you most want to, en in which seminar would you most want to enroll? Oh my. <laughs> You're asking, it's like choosing favorites among your children, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Professor Bugellen will not tell anyone what you say. <laughs> well, I, and I'm not just saying this because Professor Bugellen's here, but she teaches in um, the last part of the first year program in the research seminar part of the first year program. She teaches this great course where she brings, what is it museum studies or what's it? I don't even know what it's called, but she brings her students to Porter County Museum and they each have to choose an artifact from the museum that somehow interests them and then they have to research it and research the period it comes from and write a paper about what they found and i love museums and i just love the idea of doing something like that it's sort of i also love detective mysteries and it's kind of like being a detective right you have this thing and you're kind of researching it to to uh to find out and i i still remember the the story about the the engineering student who, who chose some great big pipe or something to research, but do you remember that, Gretchen? That was a, a segment of Valpo's original water system, just a yeah. wood pipe. So we learned a lot about early civic sanitation, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, I think that's that's really interesting. I also would really like to take um, Professor Grober's African American literature class which situates uh, African-American literature and the history of African-Americans in this country and then leads into current events. Um, he's, he's currently teaching that right now. And it's, I think, a really powerful course to be taking at this time in history. Certainly. I haven't seen any new questions come in for a little while. Does anyone else have a question that they'd like to ask either via the chat or if you'd like to, to unmute and, and ask out loud, you're welcome to do that as well. I have Hi. Oh, you go first. <laughs> no, I would just, I would love to hear more silly, crazy things that CC students <laughs> did in the past. Yeah. You don't have to go there, so. <laughs> Go ahead, Dot. Go ahead with your question, and then um, whoever, whomever the other person that chimed in, you, you'll be next, okay? <laughs> Is there a way that any of us can be supportive of you or of, the, of Christ College or anything that you can see, or, or in the ministry area also? I think, you know, just... Part, part, well, in the ministry area, participate in the activities that if, if you are in the area, right, that uh, you're able to come or, or um, we've with uh, chapel and morning prayer now we're live streaming a lot of it. So people mm -hmm. are able to participate, even though they, they do not feel safe coming. Um, you know, I, the, the one thing, <laughs> this, is, this doesn't address your question, but I, I will tell you, the, the one really unexpected thing about that new position was I spent all of my summer calling brides, telling them they couldn't get married in the chapel. It was such an unpleasant way to start. <laughs> it was just because we, um, the chapel was closed down and we couldn't allow people to get married. So we had to cancel 11 weddings this summer. Oh. Really sad. But, you know, keep us in your prayers. Uh, keep following us. Um, when you talk to friends of the university, support the idea of the humanities and the importance of the humanities and the importance of Christ College as a kind of beacon of the humanities and of the mission of the institution. Uh, we don't want to lose that. And so the more people are talking about the positive effect it had on their lives and the positive effect it can have on students' lives today, I think the more helpful that is. Thank you. Uh, who was the other question asker? Did you want, still want to chime in? Hi, that was me. 
Um, it's Katerina. <laughs> hi, um, Katerina. <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, I, I was wondering if this year's freshman seminar has any new books on the book list, and if there are, how you chose those over past ones, and then sort of on that same track, if there are any new um, like classes or seminars being offered this year that haven't been before. Um, there are no new books on the seminar on the, the reading list. In fact, there are fewer books on the reading list. Uh, they it for the first year it had to be cut, cut back because of the compression of the semester. We didn't have as many weeks and as many days to study. Um, uh, so I don't know. I do know. I don't know all of the books that have been cut out. I don't know, Gretchen, if you know if you know all the books that have been cut out. I will tell you, Katerina, though, that for the opening um, lecture, plenary lectures, all the plenary lectures in the first year program are being done remotely, or they're being taped, or they're being uh, done remotely. And I did the opening plenary, and it was called Why Study Plato When Black Lives Matter? And it was kind of a, a a, a kind of explanation for first year students as to why our first year program might be useful in thinking and experiencing um, some of the unrest that's going on in our country today, thinking about it and, and wondering about it. Um, Gretchen, do you want to say anything about, I know the Sophocles was out, right? Yeah, we just, partly because of what happened with the drama workshop also. Right. We, we opted to cut that, and Shakespeare, I think, is out. And we just took O'Connor off the spring. Oh, we really? Have, yeah. We have a similar problem in the spring, and uh, that would have been an interesting text to teach right now, yeah. given the criticisms of her and her the racist comments that she made, especially in her private correspondence. Uh, I think it would have led to some really interesting conversations that by the end of the freshman year, I think freshmen would, would be able to do that, but that was just a time constraint. And we, we um, so I think, yeah, we're still doing, doing the other text. I was having a, I like this question. Um, and we were having a conversation about the freshman curriculum recently, a couple of us, and I don't remember who said this remark. It might have actually been you, Susan, in the course of your interviews or your early days as in CC, but the comment that the curriculum is the faculty. So in some ways, it makes sense to build something like the freshman program around text and areas of expertise that we have represented in the faculty. And if you look at so I'm pulling out my notes from 10 years ago and, and looking at them next to what we're doing now. And there's been a lot of change in the faculty and it's not actually reflected in the curriculum all that much. And we need to keep teaching texts that we do. No one's saying, we well, don't like this book, we don't want to teach it anymore. Well, we say that about Kant, but we know we have to teach Kant. So. <laughs> um, but there is some thought that, that we're never going to remake it out of whole cloth at one point because there's so much that's gone into making it as great a program as it is. But if any of you have ideas about this, that would be, we'd love to hear that. Uh, things that you read that in other classes, perhaps, that you think would be really useful for freshmen to wrestle with in this first part of CC. Yeah. Um, I noticed a comment there by Hannah uh, about wanting to be in a, a book circle, but there hadn't been one in, in her city. Well, uh, all of our book circles, many of our book circles this year are going, are remote. <laughs> so you should be, you can join uh, whatever one you want all around the country. I'm actually, I'm in a book club, a local book club here in town. We're having our first remote meeting um, tomorrow night. Um, so I think a lot of book clubs are going remote. And I know Terry, do, Terry, I'm not sure how I say your last name, um, heads up the Chicago Loop one, and they are virtual. And I don't know what other ones are virtual as well. But if you contacted Brett Calland, who's our new assistant to the dean in the dean's office, 
um, he could set you up with a, a book circle that's uh, op operating via Zoom. Yeah, some of our attendees might uh, want to hear about the syllabus for the uh -huh. alumni reading groups uh, this year that um, Mark Schwain yeah. and Dorothy Bass wrote. It's yeah. really interesting, really interesting, yeah. So yeah, Mark Schwain and Dorothy Bass did the syllabus and it's on pandemic literature. Um, and it includes uh, some novels, um, some um, creative nonfiction about in the impact of, of pandemics on, on society and how people respond to them, and also a film about a uh, pandemic. And um, each text has a nice introduction written by them and then some, some study questions as well. Uh, Terry, have you guys met yet or is that, that's coming up this next week, is it? Um, yeah, we'll be meeting uh, actually in October. We're, we're starting on the plague, actually. The plague. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's a topic that hits close to home. And so we figured we'd go for a really classic text to see what happens. And I'll just say I've been surprised to see the parallels in that yeah. piece versus what's going on now. I, I, you know, I thought it was all modern and new, but it's not. No. There's a wonderful novel that's on the list, too. Uh, it's called The Year of Wonder which is about um, the plague in 15th century England um, in a small village. Um, and that, that I re recently reread that when I saw it on the syllabus. And that's, that's a very interesting novel too, in terms of some of the similarities in terms of what's happening today. Terry, if you don't mind, do you wanna give a little plug for the alumni reading groups since you're on the call? I wanna talk a little bit about how you meet and Sure, I'll, I'll be glad to. I love continuing education. I, I took an online course uh, from somewhere and it was so stimulating. And I was just amazed that I could get as good, well, I won't say that, but I could get a very good experience online and also, you know, in a, adulthood. So, you know, after being a student. So, um, yeah, we, we've met, uh, the CC Loop Group used to meet downtown and We've gone all online now, and we've, we've met for quite a few years, actually. I would say 10 or 15 years we've been meeting downtown, and we've been following the syllabuses as, as we like, sometimes more to the letter, sometimes not. Um, but the thing I find most interesting about it is that you get people from different walks of life and different perspectives on life and different professional training. And so, I mean, that's always best when somebody, you know, can come in with, you know, their background as a social worker or a judge, you know, or whatever. I, I think it's very interesting. And I, I think we can have, you know, very good, rich discussions that way. And it, it definitely keeps the, the college experience going. I think, you know, we, we do hew close to having open discussion and, you know, being thoughtful and, and intentional about what we want to say and talk about. So that's what I'd say. This is kind of a grown-up version of your uh, first year seminar where, where you were meeting with, you know, art students and music students and electrical engineers and, and chemistry people all contributing to the discussion and uh, only now you all have professions and careers and you're a little older, but it's the same idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd say so. And, and thank you to the college for, for doing this because, you know, it's, it's, been, a real, it's real, been, been a real good thing for me and a way to keep learning, so. You know, no one, no one doesn't want to keep learning after they leave, so. <laughs> well, that's excellent. Thank you so much. As we near the end of our time, um, I just want to ask you, Dr. Van Zanten, if there is one thing that you would really love the CC alumni on this call to know about Christ College today, um, what would that be? I would say that we're getting students that are uh, just, uh, we're, we're getting excellent students, students that are smart, students that are curious, students that are engaged, and students that are kind. Um, the kindness of our students to each other, I think is remarkable. Um, in an honors setting where often it's, you know, high stakes and competitive and our students work together. Um, and to see how they're handling, you know, the, the constrained circumstances this year is 
really admirable, but it, it shows, you know, it brings out the best in them. I think situations like this often bring out the best in, in people and in communities. And uh, our students are as, as good and as strong as ever. We're not, we're not losing quality at all. And I'm just really proud of our students. And well, you that's, too. <laughs> that's wonderful to hear. Um, if anyone has any lingering questions that they would like to ask you about CC, how might they get in touch? Uh, my email is susan.vanzanten at velpo.edu. Happy to get your emails and answer your questions. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon for Homecoming at Home, A History of Muller Hall, and Q&A with Dean Susan Van Zanten. Uh, we hope that you will join us for some other homecoming events. And you can head to velpo.edu slash homecoming, and that'll take you to the list of remaining events. Uh, we'll also, in the coming weeks, be sharing some recap videos and recordings from our events. So stay tuned to our social media, at Velpo Alumni on Twitter and Instagram, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash Valparaiso University Alumni. We're active, we're posting, we hope to see you on there interacting with us. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening.